clinic escorts are, um, we don't see them all the time. Very but, aggressive. But they're, yeah, some are yeah. very aggressive. If a woman comes out changing their minds, they like try to get them to go back in. So you can, what happened last week? It happened right before Christmas. There was an escort that was here and the couple came out and the man was so happy and exuberant. He was giving us thumbs up. They were going to keep the baby and they were so excited. And she like runs over and tries to get them to go back in. There's different versions of side belt yeah. counseling, yeah. right? So sometimes I'll show up at nine, I'll see a couple or a, the man usually because the women don't come out yet and he's angry. And he's angry because he was told he was going to hell by this early morning crew. And so he's angry at me now. And I have to now kind of come in under his emotions and say, listen, I'm here because I love you. I'm here because I care about you. And I don't know what the guy said before, but I'm here out of love. So we decided to have this uh, world's largest baby shower. Uh, one of the things that we realized in our community, there are a lot of individuals who are single parents and we wanted to be a blessing to them as a church. So many times there, it's frowned upon, it's looked bad upon, uh, and, and I understand that. We wish everyone came from two-parent households, but because we have such a, a large number of individuals, upward of 70% of our households who are single parents, we decided to be a blessing to them. We decided to invite them in, we decided to help them, and what better way than to say, hey, with this new baby, we wanna help you have uh, everything that you need. You know, if someone says, well, you're trying to make her choose one way or another. No, absolutely not. What we're doing is we're trying to help her take that step back and say, These, this is the reality of all of my options that I have. It just feels like fear, like complete fear. Like you're in this box. There's just nobody to call. <laughs> There's nobody to call or reach out to. I don't, I, it's, it, there's no way to actually describe it. Especially with all the sickness on top of it too. Like if in the first trimester when you're so sick and you're so afraid, it, the, everything just shrinks down into this one little narrow pathway of like, this is the only thing that I can do. We want to be able to provide them with that space to think outside the box and say, okay, so I do have that choice, but I also have, you know, the options of parenting, the option of adoption, you know, and what that would look like in their lives. And we kind of try and help them go step by step through what each one of those would look like in their lives and the resources and the help that we can provide them and the, that the community could provide for them to make the decision that's best for them in reality. What I tell them is that there's this, this free clinic that will give them um, free doctor visits, free maternity clothes. I tell them about a home to live in. So I say, whatever you need, we're here to help you. Whatever you're worried about, we can help you. And so that's, that's what I tell them in those few minutes. So in my mind, it's like you see all these pro-life people who are very intense and very shaming towards like a mother or like these people who post memes on Facebook and they're kind of like snarky like I just don't understand why anyone would do that to their child like I've done this and this and this and it's like I don't know, in a mind of like a woman who's struggling, it's like, no, you wouldn't understand what it's like. I've had women text me before, um, you know, after the abortion and just, I mean, the things that they say, I mean, some of them, they want to get pregnant again right away, which is so interesting because like they've just, you know, aborted a baby, but they want to like make up for what they've done somehow and they think that they can redeem it by having another baby. Um, others want to kill themselves um, you know it's just it's a wide array of emotions it's yeah um, do you deal with women who feel trapped like they don't have a choice oh yeah um, a lot of the women that come to us are facing situations that are just putting them 
um, in the mindset that they can't continue this pregnancy, that it's just not the right time, whether it's financial. You know, it's a good thing to help people. Uh, a lot of times people aren't in need of a handout. They're in the need of a hand up. And so we don't call ourselves giving people handouts. We call ourselves giving people a hand up, helping them to reach the, de the next stage of life, helping them to reach where they're trying to get to. And a lot of times there are people who are hurting and in desperate need of just a little bit. And if we can come alongside of them and help them in a little way and help provide a little love, a little compassion, a little concern, you never know that seed that's planted into their hearts, you never know what it'll blossom into. It is about like the woman and the mom, but I think that it's overlooked that there's like extreme like suffering that happens after an abortion. There's a lot of trauma. Like they don't tell you that it's gonna be as painful as it's gonna be. Or just as like, <laughs> like feel free to not put this in there, but every time I get my period, it's like hell. <laughs> and I can't go to like the dentist, like any like loud noises. You know, we just keep doing what we do. That's all we can do. You know, I mean, our philosophy is you have to show them love. You have to show them the love of the Father. Otherwise, you know, why would they want to listen to me? Why would they want to save this life? Because a lot of people, they don't believe it is a life. And so, you know, what, what does anything matter? So I have to show them that they matter first. Over 2,500 mothers and single parents were blessed and we, uh, you know, we were, thankful to do it and, and grateful to do it and, and excited about doing it. We're unconditional about our help. We don't care if you're black, white, brown, yellow, we don't care, red, we don't care. We don't care if you're a believer or a non-believer. We don't care what your political thoughts are. We want to show people the love of Christ. We want to show people that on the south side of Chicago, right in the hood, there are people who are uh, being an example of what Christianity should be about. and that's meeting needs. At the end of the day, people need to have their needs met regardless of who they are. So many of them do say, I would love to parent, I would love to keep this baby, but I just can't. And so that's where we come in and try and dive in, okay, tell me more about the I can't. What is it that's preventing you from making the choice that you really want to make? And what we want to do as a church and as a community is try to meet those needs and just show people love. Because at the end of the day, uh, the Bible tells us that this is how men will know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So we just try to display love and, and try to show that love to any and everyone. There are options out there, but when your world's this small, and like you're so in fear and sick and despair, like you don't see all that stuff. So I think we could just all do a lot better on a day-to-day -day basis on how we treat other women. And so I think for me and for so many other girls, abortion seems not only like the only choice, but really like a compassionate choice. Like I am doing this selflessly. I'm doing it for the son I already have. I'm sacrificing any emotional trauma I may have down the line. Um, yes, I know this is not ideal, but it's something I have to do. Um, and it's the best possible way out of a horrible situation.